Forced degradation is used to identify potential degradant of a molecule and to develop stability indicating analytical method. Now when it comes to hydrolytic degradation or the hydrolysis degradation, it is very important that the drug substance preferably should get dissolved into the solvent and as the hydrolytic degradation is going to be conducted into the aqueous medium it's been observed that the molecules with the smaller size are not soluble across the pH range starting from acidic to the alkali and then there comes a necessity of co-solvent which is going to help molecule to get solubilized into the aqueous solution. My name is Bhaskar Napte and today we are going to discuss about how to select suitable co-solvent during hydrolytic forced degradation. Now these are the general categories of the forced degradation. Humidity degradation, thermal, acid-based hydrolysis, photostability and the oxidation. So our focus is going to be on to acid-based hydrolysis or hydrolytic degradation. So what is meant by hydrolysis? The hydrolysis is nothing but the reaction of water with the molecule. And generally this reaction is acid catalyzed and alkali catalyzed. Solubilization of API is preferred during hydrolytic degradation to yield the better understanding of the degradation product. But many small molecule drugs are not soluble in water across the entire pH range. So how to get the molecule solubilized and that's where an idea of using co-solvent comes into picture. But the real challenge is now how one can select the suitable co-solvent and if you look at the industrial practices people often use either methanol or acetonitrile as the co-solvent but are they really a good co-solvent now this is the question that we are going to talk and afterward we will also come to a conclusion about which solvent are preferred at the various pH range. So the co-solvent must be added now to facilitate a dissolution under the conditions of low solubility. Now this is our understanding. Two most commonly used co-solvents are ACN and methanol that has been discussed. Now in acidic condition, methanol can participate in degradation that is nucleophilic attack at carbonyl carbon at carboxylic group ester functional groups or the amide functional groups let us understand what is meant by carbonyl carbon now if you look at this is the ester right and this is a carbonyl functional groups c double bond o and the carbon of the carbonyl functional group is called as the carbonyl carbon now what is the problem with this carbonyl carbon? So let me show you what actually can happen. So this carbonyl carbon is attached to the highly electronegative atom like oxygen. Can you see near the cursor? Now this oxygen is what? It's highly electronegative atom. Now what is meant by electronegative atom? An atom which attracts electron towards itself. That means this oxygen is going to attract electron towards itself and going to develop a minus delta charge. And hence this carbonyl carbon will develop a slight positive delta charge. Now look at the methanol. So methanol can act as a nucleophile in the acidic environment 
So what is mean by nucleophile? So nucleophile is a molecule that donates an electron pair to make a covalent bond with the electrophilic site and that is where exactly going to happen with the carbonyl carbon because the carbonyl carbon has the electrophilic site with the plus delta charge whereas the methanol can have the slight negative charge because of CS3O- minus which can attack onto the carbonyl carbon and this is where the methanol can participate in degradation because of nucleophilic attack. The astronitrile is generally regarded as an inert solvent. However, it is not completely inert. So there are some secondary reactions possible with the ACN. So what is they? Under elevated temperature and highly acidic or basic condition, ACN can degrade to acetamide and or acetic acid. Now below is the reaction by which you can identify there is a formation of acetamide and acetic acid. So ACN is known to contribute to base catalyzed epoxidation reactions in the presence of peroxide. It's also been identified that the titanium dioxide can catalyze degradation of ACN to amine in the presence of light or sonication. Now in case if you are conducting the forced degradation for drug product containing titanium dioxide then you must be little careful in case if you have ACN as a co-solvent. <clears throat> but more importantly most of these side reactions of ACN are relatively minor and ACN still remains the most frequently used co-solvent. So which co-solvent to be used for hydrolytic degradation? And here is the list for you. In case if you are, if you are conducting hydrolytic degradation in acidic pH, then these are the five solvents of choice. ACN, DMSO, acetic acid, propionic acid or THF. When you talk about neutral pH range, then ACN, N-methyl pyrrolidone and methanol can be preferred. For basic pH, ACN, DMSO, glyme, diglyme, para, dioxane or methanol can be selected as a co-solvent. It's very important to note that the co-solvent can change the pH of solution and which can in turn change the degradation rate and the pathway also. So it's very important for you to understand the impact of this usage of co-solvent. Therefore, it may be useful but not required to stress the compound as a slurry in 100% aqueous condition in addition to stressing in the presence of co-solvent. So in case there is a lot of difference between the degradation profile that you are getting after adding the co-solvent, it can be interesting to understand whether this degradation is getting possible because of the hydrolytic degradation or is there any secondary interaction because of the co-solvent. So thank you so much for watching this video and I am sure that you must have got some idea on usage of suitable co-solvent during hydrolytic force degradation. Bye-bye.